like this relationship we got. It's very simpatico. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Wednesday, November 8th. Now that reminds me, I've got a live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my lovely co-host Taylor were there for an hour talking to other investors about stocks they're interested in. I share stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to share some hot stocks with us. We'll look at any penny stock you got. I'll go over the information. My co-host Taylor will go over the charts and we'll give you our opinion on it, whatever that's worth to you. Now, normally we get through all the tickers that are presented because I'm not that popular yet, but sometimes we don't. So if you really want to get your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early. The show starts at four, but I put up a placeholder for the video earlier, sometimes around noon. So you can place your ticker in the comments early. That gives me a chance to go over the information as well and give you the most information I can. That's four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Now I want you to know that I am doing these videos for my Discord group, Penny Boys. I don't tell you that often enough. Penny Boys is a Discord group that trades anything, OTC and penny stocks, tokens, NFTs, cryptos, blue chip stocks. They even do sports betting. We've got lots of members and we've got lots of teachers that can teach you how to trade. So if you're looking for some place to go to chat, a place to go to learn, come on over to Penny Boys Discord. I would love to see you there. There is an invite down in the description below. It is from the wizard. When you come on in, look me up. I am the stocks wizard. So what I like to do here on this show is share my due diligence with you on hot penny stocks. I trade penny stocks all day and I'm keeping my eye open for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Now I'm normally doing most of my research by looking at the charts. I'm looking for a chart that has heat. I don't pay any heed to the press releases or the filings until I find a chart that has heat. What's heat? Well, how about volume coming in or a big breakout setup or big bounces that just keep going higher and higher? Something that makes that chart look like it wants to rise. When I find a chart like that, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. When you got a hot catalyst with a hot chart, you got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I bring to you each day. And today is no different. I've got three to share with you right now. First stock we're going to take a look at is ticker OMIC. This is Singular Genomics Systems. Now her chart, it's an atypical breakout chart. We love those. You got the 200 day SMA with the price way underneath it. Both of them falling, then the 200 starts to level out and that gives the price a chance to cut through it and run. And that is what is happening right now. Now this is a real simple catalyst for the company. She has financials coming out on the 14th. There's been a lot of volume coming into the picture. She is now breaking out over the 200. I think it's a perfect setup for a run. So OMIC, she finished the day at 57.2 cents and just about 9% gains. We've got another major exchange stock here. This comes from the NASDAQ. You gotta love these penny stocks on the major exchanges. They come with benefits. You don't have to pay to trade them. Major exchange stocks have no transaction fees. Plus, you can trade it pre-market and aftermarket. You will see OTC stocks trading pre-market, aftermarket, but not by us, not your everyday investors. Those are marketeers and brokers, not us. But on the major exchange, everybody, can get in there. So what is OMIC about? Well, they tell us over here that Singular Genomics is a life science technology company that develops next generation sequencing and multimix technologies. The commercially available G4 sequencing platform is a powerful, highly versatile benchtop genomic sequencer designed to produce fast and accurate results. In addition, Singular Genomics commenced development of the PX system, which leverages Singular's proprietary sequencing technology, applying it as an in situ readout to look at RNA and proteins in a single cell and tissue. Singular's genomics mission is to empower researchers and clinicians to advance science and medicine. So they're coming up with technologies that others are gonna use so that they can move forward. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Hey, how about that for a jump? Boom, 
She went from 150,000 shares up to 5 million shares today. Now that's a big kick, no doubt about that. But check out the volume yesterday. I'm jumping over here to Yahoo Finance where they give us historical data for every single day of trading. You can get the open, the close, the high, the low, and the volume for every single day of trading. Great page. Well, you can see today they did do 5 million shares, but yesterday they did more than double that at 11.3 million. Day before that, they only did 163,000, and the day before that, a mere 19,000. So the volume is definitely picking up, and the only catalyst we got right now is the financials on November 14th. Taking a look at the share structure for the company, all they tell us is the outstanding share count, which is about 73 million. We know the float isn't going to be any higher than that. It could be up to 73 million, or it could be considerably less. We really don't know. Market cap for the company is about 38 million. Financials for OMIC. Well, it looks like 2022 was the first year they started making revenues. They did $765,000. We know that's thousands because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Problem is they didn't make a profit. They actually lost $24,000 right out of the gate. Looking at her quarterlies, well, her first quarter for the 2023 period is bigger than her entire revenues for 2022. She did $863,000, getting profits this time of $56,000. But then she dropped $350,000 in their last quarterly report to $500,000, and they're losing money again, losing $92,000. Taking a look at that balance sheet. Cash in the bank. They've got about $75 million. They got $131 million out in short-term investments. Add up all their assets, they've got a total of $284 million. Add up all their liabilities and debt, they've got a total of about $66 million. Subtract the liabilities from the assets, and you end up with shareholder equity. Positive $218 million. That's what we're looking for. Disclosures for the company. All right, we've got some Form 4s here. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of shares of the company's stock. We're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. Neither is the case here. All of these Form 4s are restricted shares, so they really have no bearing to us. Then we've got an 8K here on September 14th. They were terminating a lease. Outside of that, there's not a whole lot here in the filings. And when you look at the news, well, there's not a lot over there either. We have uh, back in September, the company presents at Gil Martin Group Emerging Growth Company Showcase. And then on October 24th, they told us Singular is to report their third quarter 2023 financial results on November 14th. And that's all we got right now. Volume is coming in. The charts are breaking out right now on an atypical breakout chart. It all looks good to me. Let's go look at that chart. Are you ready to do some charting? God knows I am. It's the favorite part of DD for me. So we are looking at ticker OMIC, and we're going to chart this on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I got this when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. But TD Ameritrade and Schwab, they did a merger a couple years ago, and it's all completed now. So chances are you can probably get Think or Swim from either one of them. So we are looking at ticker OMIC on a one-day, one-year chart. We've got a 52-week high in February of $3 when she just barely broke out over the 200, and that was the only time she touched the 200 in the entire year. She came down here to a 52-week low of about 31 cents November 1st. And as you can see, we rarely get any volume here, and this one volume spike we got didn't move the price at all. Now we're getting a ton of volume, and the price is moving. Looking at our six-month, four-hour view. Six months ago, when she was over the 200, she was at $2.37. Came down, she did touch the 200 one more time in July, didn't hold it, fell down to that 52 week low of 31 cents, and off of this low, she is bouncing and climbing and breaking out. All in one smooth move. She went through the 50, had this humongous directional intentional spike. She went through the 200 with the wick all the way up, came back down no lower than where she started. 
This is a definitive sign to me that this stock wants to break out and climb. And boy, did she. When she came back down, she hit the nine-day SMA. When she bounced, look at the gap between the price and that nine day immediately. And she floated up there until she got over that 200. Then she put down a peg on the nine day SMA, jumped off of that. This is looking beautiful. The volume is outstanding. All of our SMAs are pointing up and curved right now, looking sweet. And our oscillators, every single one of them is going to the moon and on fire. RSI is all the way up at 81. She has pulled back, but she is still blood red. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she hasn't been doing anything here for about 15 days. She hit this low bubble and bounced off of that. Slowly and methodically, she went through all of her SMAs, crossing that 200. No fervor, no excitement until here. <laughs> Yesterday, she jumped from 38 cents up to about 58 cents. Kept most of those gains. She came back to the nine-day SMA and started riding up, hitting a new high of about 61 cents today. She has come back down with these strong pillars coming down through the nine-day, but she didn't touch the stronger SMAs underneath it. That can be a bit worrisome, but she got back up on top of that nine, and she's still sitting on top of it, even though she's had a little bit of pullback after market hours. All of our SMAs look beautiful here, including our 200, which is now sloped up and climbing. Our oscillators, they are cooling off just a, a little bit. Our PPO is still way up there, but she is pulling down. Our MACD has had a crossover to the downside and is pushing down with red bars right now. Geez, the chart doesn't look like that. And our RSI, she's come out of the overbought and she is now down at about 58 Looking at our five-day, five-minute, I see we've got some aftermarket activity going on. So five days ago, we were at that 31 cents underneath the 200. She just walked right on over that 200, took this big jump, went sideways for quite a while until when? Until she hit the 200. Now, yeah, she did come down to it, but she was waiting for it. That's why she was going sideways. She's already on the 50. The only other SMA that's coming along is the 200. Once she hit that, she did bounce off, but she isn't going anywhere yet. She's come back to it, bounced again. She is really hanging tight to this 50-day SMA. And right now, she is pulling back, coming back down to that 200. But as you can see, our 200 is on an incline right now. Now, our oscillators aren't happy. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, has crossed downwards and is pushing down. Our MACD has crossed the signal line and pushing down. Our RSI is falling. I'm expecting a bounce here, but we are really looking at this for November 14th, right? Tomorrow is going to be November 9th. Who knows what's going to happen between now and November 14th? So you've got to keep your eye on it. Maybe you want to start a position. Maybe you don't. I'm sharing it with you because the chart is hot and right now is financial season. So you could get a pop if she brings out good news. OMIC. I got it on my watch list. Won't hurt to put it on yours either. This next stock we're taking a look at, I became aware of through the grapevine. I listen all day to people talking about stocks at Twitter, Investor Hub, the Discord group, and they've got friends in other groups, and we're all sharing due diligence, and that's how I became aware of MicroCloud Hologram today, one of my friends on Twitter, T.Rick. Thank you, my friend. This is ticker H-O-L-O. -O. Now, the reason they're talking about it is the chart. Now, I'm always talking to you about the chart before we look at the stock. Well, I forgot. The OTC markets has charts that we can look at, not to analyze, but so that you at least have a general impression about what it is I'm talking about. So this is the chart we are considering today. This is the whole situation right here. Back at the beginning of August, she took a hot run. She went up 350% up to about $11.60. And then on the 13th of September, she took this abrupt fall, going even deeper than where she started. And then she fell all the way down here to about 63 cents. Now, I have drawn a strong resistance and support here. We have prices underneath it hitting it and prices on the top hitting it. 
what we're looking at here, folks, is an easy 350% gains just getting back to home, just to where she's comfortable, where she spends most of her time. Forget all of that. I'm just talking about from where she's at now up to this support right there. That should give us about 350% gains. Now, there are three questions you have to ask when you look at this sort of chart. First, what got it so excited that it ran 350%? Could it get it running again? Two, why did it fall so abruptly? And three, is there enough potential for us to make a play and get some gains? That's what we're going to take a look at. So, Holo finished the day today at about 63 and a half cents, and she fell almost 7%. She too is on the NASDAQ. So, what is this company about? Well, they tell us here that MicroCloud Hologram engages in the research and development and application of holographic technology. MicroCloud Hologram provides its holographic technology services to its customers worldwide. The company also provides holographic digital twin technology services and has a proprietary holographic digital twin technology resource library. The resource library captures shapes and objects in 3D holographic form by utilizing a combination of holographic digital technologies, a whole bunch of them that they list here. But the company is also involved with LiDAR. LiDAR are the eyes for the autonomous vehicles that we have driving themselves for robots. Now, they could use a lot of different types of technology. They could use radar, sonar, or they could use LiDAR. So the company is producing LiDAR solutions based on the holographic technology. They are making a holographic LiDAR sensor chip, a holographic vehicle intelligent vision technology to serve customers that provide holographic advanced driver assistance systems. I guess this ADAS is going to be part of our electric autonomous cars and you're just going to engage this and you're using LiDAR holographic technology. It is very interesting and very deep. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, we had an increase of about 33% going from roughly 1 million shares to 1.6 million shares. Share structure for the company. Not a lot of information. All we get is the outstanding share count, which isn't too bad. It's only at about 51 million. Now our float could be that high, but it could be considerably less too. Who really knows until you go digging around. The market cap, we are at about $34.5 million. Financials for Holo. Well, looks like she started making revenues in 2021. Didn't do bad her first year. She did roughly $56 million, getting to keep about $40 million in profit. The next year, she kicked it up about $15 million to $72 million. But she made less profit, dropping from $39 down to $33 million. Looking at her quarterlies, what a mess. <laughs> a year ago, we were doing $24 million. I'm not sure what's up with this quarterly report. September, we did another $24 million. And what the heck happened the last quarter of 2022? Minus $50 million in revenue, and they lost $22 million. How do you stay in business like that? First quarter of 2023, they only did $6.5 million, but they are back into profits. They got to keep $3.8 million. And there should be another report out there. I don't see that they're behind here. It's not here, and I'm not going to jump into it right now, folks, but there is another quarterly report for June. Taking a look at the balance sheet for the company. They got money, money in the bank. They got about $20 million. Add up all their assets together, they got about $37 million. All their debt and liability, roughly $12 million. Subtract the $12 million from the $37 million, and you roughly got $25 million positive shareholder equity. That's a good thing. Looking at those disclosures for Hollow. All right, we've got an F3 here that came out September 22nd. Now, the big 80% drop happened September 13th. 
Had this happened before, this would be the cause because they are putting $100 million worth of shares on the market. It's a public offering. That is going to be another 150 million shares roughly at that price. Now, considering that her share structure right now is at 50 million and they're going to add another 150 million, that is quadrupling your share count. They're going to lose 75% of their shareholder value. But it didn't happen back then. So we still haven't found a reason for it falling, except for the fact that it ran 350%. Maybe that's the reason. Profit takers. Then we've got an S8 here. This is a little older. This is for management incentives. Outside of that, there's no more information over here to consider. But we do have a lot of news to look at. Now, this is the news they actually bring here. We have gone back to August, and I've got a few pieces of news here, but there's a lot more news. Jumping over to one of my other favorite sites for news, insidertracking.com. They show us a lot of news here, but it's older. This starts in February. There's nothing after February. This news over here starts in August. So where's the rest of the news between February and August? I mean, they put out a lot of news. So I'm thinking there's something missing here. Now, we're not going to go through any of this, but I do want to headline it for you because the company's involved in a lot of stuff. These all came out February of this year. The company develops 3D BIM blockchain NFT technology. The company develops a holographic quantum chromodynamic database. And the company creates a hollow digital human chat GPT to build new virtual interaction models. Now looking at the current news. This one came out September 8th. The company develops a sports training system with a holographic brain computer interface. We're going to dive into that one. We're also going to look at this one. MicroCloud develops chat GPT holographic virtual digital human technology. And then there's that last piece of news. They are putting out $100 million worth of shares. Now let's take a look at these two pieces of news here. This one came out September 8th. The company today announced the development of holographic virtual digital humans based on chat GPT. Virtual to digital people can understand and realize human computer interaction experience with emotion. Folks, we're talking about deep fakes here. We're talking about people that look real, sound real, act real, but aren't real. The voice isn't real. The picture isn't real. None of it is real. It is all AI generated. People who are going to be able to talk to you, smile and laugh. They're even going to go, uh, 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 just like that because that's what humans do. And that is a big part of things that they're doing right now. The other piece of important news, this one came out September 8th. The company announced the launch of multi-layer joint learning framework based on logistic regression models to construct a motion training system based on machine learning and SVM holographic brain computer interface. Now they explain how this works. It's a little technical, but it is mind boggling. Brain computer interface is a communication technology that does not depend on people's normal peripheral nerves and muscle tissue. It is a direct connection pathway established between human or animal brain and external devices. A direct connection to your brain and an external device. The motion training system of holographic brain computer interface solves the difficult problem of exercise for patients with functional disorders and stimulates, extracts, and utilizes their active movement willingness. Just a willingness and strengthens the use of the affected limbs, improves the motor function of the limb. By combining MEMS flexible microsensor array technology with BCI brain computer interface technology, 
multi-source information fusion and adaptive feedback control technology, it can not only significantly improve the motor function of limbs, but also promote the reorganization of the functional dependent area of the cortex, thereby expanding the cortical motor control area of the affected limb, providing an effective tool for early rehabilitation training of patients with hand dysfunctions. In the field of rehabilitation medicine, the motion training system of holographic brain-computer interface can effectively assist the rehabilitation and training of neuromuscular patients such as stroke or spinal cord injury by controlling robotic arms and exoskeleton robots. Now there's a lot of information here folks and I'm having a hard time digesting it all. But it seems to me from what I'm able to grasp that they're using holographic images that your brain can see and perceive. And when it sees things moving, it accepts it as real, kind of like a dream. It sees this hand moving so your brain stimulates, simulates the thinking patterns it takes to move so that your limbs start to get better. Like I said, there's a lot more information here, but it's big. It is good for rehabilitation, and it's a little scary that they are actually connecting the brain to devices. As I said, a lot more due diligence is necessary here. So the company stock took a run of 350%, dropped 80%, and has left us an opportunity for 350% gains. Easy. If it goes above that support line, we're going to make even more. Let's go check out that chart. Chart sort of looks familiar to you, doesn't it? <laughs> this is ticker HOLO, Micro Cloud Hologram. And we're looking at a six month, four hour view. It was right here. She started at 350% run at the beginning of August. She was at roughly $2.50 and ran up to $11.60. And then on September 13th, no news, no reason, no apparent cause, she plummeted over 80%, dropping from 1160 all the way down here to $1.25. But she wasn't done falling. She kept dribbling downhill until she hit this 52-week low of 47 cents. Now, she has been going sideways. There's not a whole lot of activity. She is floating on that 50-day SMA. Looks to me like she's biding time. You've got the 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious right towards it. You've got the 200 haul coming up underneath it. They're going to pinch this. And I believe that once that 200 gets close enough, we're going to see her make a move and break out and start to run up to that support right there. Volume has been real strong here the last 10 days. Osculators are getting strong. Our PPO is pushing up, though it's staying very close to that line. It is on an incline. And our ADX... My trend continuation is on a decline. When you see the PPO going up and the ADX going down like that, when they are spreading apart, guaranteed your price is rising. Let's get a closer look. Is our price rising? Well, you really can't see it there, can you? Our MACD is falling. She's at a crossover to the negative side and is approaching the signal line. And our RSI has been very cool the entire day, riding pretty much at 48. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So our high is back here at about 98 cents, hitting that low of 47 cents, coming back around, crushing that 200, and now she's bouncing all over it. Boink, 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 boink. <laughs> she doesn't want to go anywhere, but she's holding on. And that is giving time for our 200-day SMA not only to level out, but to start turning up. Everything is looking like it is setting up right now. All of our other SMAs have gotten on top of the 200. Our oscillators, they're not very strong. We have a downdraft on our PPO, just like we do our MACD. And our RSI has fallen even further down. It's at 45 right now. Looking at our five day, five minute. Whew. Now there's some volatility. She started back here at 75 cents, fell to 54, went up to 78, fell back to 59. She is just all over the place. But really, 
She is just hanging around the 200-day SMA. And now she's gotten very close to it. She's hanging tight to it. I think she is going to pop. I think once the 4-hour 200-day SMA gets close, this is going to jump on top of it and is going to go to that $2.50 mark. Oscillators on the 5-minute chart, eh, they're a bit mixed up. They are trying to push up right now, but they are also falling down, if that makes any sense. But I think she's worth a watch. She has got some hot technology here, definitely worth some more due diligence. Her chart is setting up. I mean, that 200 is coming close to her, and the chart took a big drop after a huge run for no cause. I think she's going to come back to at least normal, which is 350%. If she has good push, we could end up with some huge gains on this. Come on, folks. H-O-L-O. -O. You know it belongs in your watch list. Next ticker we're taking a look at, I shared yesterday, but not in a video. This is Leap Charger Corporation, ticker LCCN. When I'm doing my research and due diligence through the day, if I find a real hot chart or a hot piece of news or something interesting, I post it. I put it on Twitter, Facebook, my Discord group. Well, I found some interesting information yesterday for ticker LCCN, Leap Charger Corporation, and I posted it. This is what I shared with everybody. First, I gave them a picture of the chart. This is a one-hour chart. She has been climbing for 20 days, steady and easy, without any volatility. And then I gave them a whole bunch of reasons why it should be running. Well, today, she took a huge drop. She crashed through the 200 really deep, kind of scary. And then right behind that drop, she popped, came back up over that 200 and ended up taking gains today. And I'm still liking ticker LCCN. So she finished off the day at $1.68 with about 10.5% gains. She's on the OTC, the pink tier. She's current. She's got a verified profile and a transfer agent. That's good. That's validated information right there. With pinks, you don't get any validated information, not even their financials. So to get these two green ticks with the pink, that's the best you're going to get. They also have independent directors listed here. That's a good thing. The only reason I know of that you list independent directors here is when you are planning to uplist. Now, I haven't read this anywhere, but it's probably in one of their filings. Have fun looking. And they tell us they are a shell risk, which means they're in business, but they're not reporting any revenues. That's not a good thing. So what does Leap Charger Corporation do? Well, they tell us here that Leap Charger Corporation is an emerging growth company that aims to provide high quality electric vehicle charging solutions to consumers and businesses. Our operations are based in the United Arab Emirates, and we aim to expand operations into other regions such as North America, Europe, and South Asia in the near future. Our charging stations will be strategically placed in high traffic areas, ensuring that EV owners have easy access to our services. We offer user-friendly mobile apps that allow our customers to easily locate our charging stations, reserve charging spots, and pay for their charging sessions. We have also integrated advertising solutions in our charging stations to generate additional income. And they're doing a lot of things right now, but they are just getting started. And to get more information about what's going on, I've jumped into their most recent financial. They tell us here on March 2nd, 2023, the company entered into an asset purchase agreement with Leap Electric Car Charging Stations Limited Liability Company out of Dubai. The seller has developed an electric vehicle charging station design with the latest technology, which will be strategically located in high traffic areas to provide a seamless charging experience. The seller's user-friendly mobile app and smart charging features make it easy for customers to use. Effective the same day, the company appointed Mr. Vijakai Kumar, that is the owner of Leap Electric Car Charging Solutions, he is now going to serve as the President, Chief Executive Officer, Treasurer, Chief Financial Officer, and Director of the company. And he will serve these positions until the next annual meeting of the company or until his respective successor is duly appointed. 
Now, the company's got two subsidiaries, Leap Electric Car Charging Stations in Dubai and Leap Charger Inc. here in the United States. So, what was the relative volume around the company today? Jump into every page but the right one. <laughs> Oh boy, we got a huge increase. We've got 300% increase, but we've got some real small numbers. She jumped from 52,000 shares up to 156,000 shares. Exactly 300%. Share structure for Leap. Well, they tell us the outstanding share count is just about 53 million. Woo, the insiders own a lot of those, about 42 million of them. And we get the rest, about 11 million shares. A legitimate low float is starting at 10 million. I'm going to call this a low float. Financials for LCCN. Well, they tell us she's a shell risk, so we shouldn't see any money over here. Ah, the last quarter they started bringing in money. They got $44,000 and they only got to keep 2,000 of it. But it's money on the books. This shell risk should fall away. Taking a look at the balance sheet for the company. Uh-oh. <laughs> a lot of dashes here. Cash in the bank. That ain't two bucks. Remember, we got three zeros here. So they got $2,000 in the bank. Total assets of $5.2 million. Total liabilities is chump change, $128,000. Subtract that from that $5 million. That gives us stockholder equity of $5 million. It ain't much but it's positive. Taking a look at those disclosures. Nope, we got nothing here since 2021, but we do have news to consider. So I am going back here. Geez, this is just October, folks. All of this news, all of it is just from October of this year. Now we're just going to headline this, though there is one piece of news we will be jumping into. Going through each one of these. The company confirms trading symbol change to LCCN and files quarterly report for August 31st, 2023. So they just changed their ticker, which means we're going to have a smaller chart. Leap Charger welcomes new management and announces new corporate website. So we got a new website and we know we've got new management. Is it the same guy though, or have they got new people? I haven't dove into this to find out. The company commences product and brand recognition marketing awareness campaign. The company announces arrival of the first EV charging stations in Dubai, expects them to be imminently operational along with its fully functioning app. Leap Charger to leverage various revenue streams on the way to profitability. They've already told you that they're working with advertising, they're working with their apps, memberships, partnerships, sponsorships, whatever they can do. Then they tell us here on the 31st of October, the company unveils social media campaign aimed at increasing brand awareness. Let's get everybody out there knowing your name so when they see it, they're familiar. And the last piece of news we got here, the company is actively seeking to expand footprint across Dubai leveraging Dubai's Green Mobility Initiative. So the company's just getting started. They've got a new company over in Dubai. They are setting up over there right now. They want to expand in Europe, South Asia, and North America. I don't know if that means America or Canada, uh, Mexico, something like that. In either case, they're just getting going right now, just getting started, just got revenues on the books, and the chart is hot. Let's go take a look at that chart. Would you believe that is the entire chart for Leap Charger, ticker LCCN? We are looking at a six-month, four-hour view. It was right here, October 5th. Just a little while ago, she came on the market with this ticker at about $1.80. And quickly and abruptly, she fell down to a low of $0.41. Cents. Off of this low bubble, she changed her trend. She turned around and started climbing and hasn't stopped. She has just been pushing up so easily and gently until today, her first volatility. She crashed from about a buck fifty down to 60 cents and then popped right back up, setting a new high today of $1.84 and then pulling back to a buck 68. Still above everything and still climbing. Our volume has been strong all this time and it looks like it is growing. 
Our oscillators, our PPO is pushing up just like our MACD, though our RSI has pulled back just a little bit, but it's at 66 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view, <laughs> that's a beautiful chart. There's that low bubble of 41 cents and just steady climbing all the way up. Had that breakaway first thing this morning, and then she came right back up and just steady climbing. And at the end of the day, she has pulled back just a little bit, but she is still above all of the days before. Oscillators, all of them were pushing up. They have just a little bit of pullback right now because of that red bar. And our RSI was clear up at 92 in the overbought and has fallen back now to 66. Looking at our five day, five minute. Ooh, we can't see much there. Let me zoom in on that for us. Right there. That's a little better. So she's stair stepping up and up, up and up, up and up. Nice. And you really can't tell when she's going to pop. It's not like the first thing in the morning or the middle of the day. It happens anywhere. But today, today was unlike any other day. Lots of volatility came into the picture. Huge crash from that buck 50 all the way down, coming right back up, ripping through the 200, the 50, the 20, jumping onto a nine day SMA, climbing to that new high, pulling back, bouncing off of the 50, which is where she's been hovering over all this time. And that's where she's at right now, right there. 168, hovering over the 50 day SMA. It is still looking good to me. The oscillators are cooling off. There was a big drop right there. They were real high, but they're still in good position. All she has to do is bounce and these oscillators are gonna turn around. Our MACD has fallen pretty hard though. She's come under her line and she's working towards that signal line. And our RSI is also falling. She's down at 45. But again, that was a big drop from the high of 184 down to 168 right now. But I'm not really worried about that. She's got a lot of news. Things are just getting going. She's just getting revenues on the books. Everything looks good. But it isn't going to hurt you to do some more due diligence. You know I don't cover everything. And considering that you're investing your money, you need to know as much as you can. So please do some more due diligence on this stock and the other stocks I covered before you jump into them. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.